Okay, we'll go ahead and uh, get started uh, with our meeting, City Council, Winchester City Council meeting Tuesday, January the 12th, 2016. Uh, first meeting of the new year. Welcome everyone to our meeting. Uh, look forward to having all the visitors back. Uh, first on the agenda will be uh, prayer, and I will ask uh, Chief Creason if he'll lead us in prayer, please. Here's our prayer, Lord, please. Our Father in heaven, we thank you, Father, for this day, and we thank you for the blessings that you've bestowed upon us. Father, we pray that you would be with our our nation and Father, uh, the leaders, and make them uh, help them to make good decisions, Father, with the, for our nation and, and bring our nation to a a point where we return to knowing you and having you involved in all that we do. Father, we pray that you would be with our city, be with the officials here that's, that's seated in this council, and, them, and uh, we ask that you would uh, guide their decisions, Father, in the best interest of the citizens, and that, Father, you would uh, lay your hand on it and bless their decisions that all things that we do will be in uh, glory to your name. And Father, be with us now and through this meeting. It's through your son's name we pray. Amen. 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 Everyone to stand, the Council of Women Bates will lead us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, next on our agenda is addresses, presentations, and our requests. Uh, we'll have a quarterly reports from uh, the uh, utility system and airport. So, whichever one of you gentlemen want to go first. Good. And I got a dime. Look at that. <laughs> uh, good evening, everybody. Um, we did wrap up our 2015 calendar year out at the airport uh, with traffic definitely on the uptick. Uh, for our fourth year in a row, calendar-wise, uh, we had our best calendar year for fuel sales. Uh, this year we sold um, 127,644 total gallons of fuel. That includes both jet fuel uh, and the gas. Our next closest year, of course, was last year. We sold 123,000. Uh, 762, which is a uh, stark contrast to when I arrived, uh, like I said, this last uh, quarterly report, when I arrived here uh, almost six years ago now. Uh, we sold, I believe, that year about 62,000 uh, gallons total of fuel. A lot of things do go into that. Um, you know, the uh, uh, cost of fuel has gone down recently, which uh, definitely helps uh, traffic. It sends it through the roof. Uh, we've been very busy. Uh, the last calendar year. We've also had a chance to build up a good amount of uh, repeat customers uh, now. Uh, we've also increased the amount of tenants that we have on the field. Uh, as you can see, uh, the end of our calendar year this year, we wrapped up with 41 based aircraft. Uh, that was five more uh, than we had last calendar year. Uh, and they do kind of continue to at a slow rate. Uh, we are again, though, at 100% occupancy on all of our hangars. Uh, and we are still maintaining a hangar waiting list of uh, over 30 aircraft, uh, so that's that's good. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, back on uh, November 4th this year, we did hold uh, ceremonial groundbreaking uh, for the MedTrans and Life Force uh, folks out there. Uh, we did have over 100 people in attendance to that. Uh, I believe pretty much all uh, city council members uh, in here, uh, along with the mayor. Uh, we also had uh, uh, Franklin County Mayor uh, Richard Stewart attended, as well as uh, uh, State Representative David Alexander. Thank you, uh, Seal, for dragging him along. Um, it was actually very exciting. Uh, after all was said and done, they said uh, that the people who put the event on said that we actually had more people attend our groundbreaking than the one in Cleveland. Uh, so that's pretty good. I mean, a slightly bigger city and uh, there, and we still put on a better show uh, than they did. I felt pretty good about that. Um, but. Uh, we are still continuing negotiations with them um, uh, for phase two of their lease. We do have a lease in place for phase one, which allows them to um, have their temporary facility get into operation. It does also allow them to do uh, uh, any engineering and geotechnical work towards uh, uh, the construction of their permanent facility. Uh, they will not be able to actually uh, physically break ground, though, until we have uh, a second phase lease in place. Uh, construction will more than likely begin, though, in 2016. We hope to be able to uh, work with them in about the next uh, two to three months to put that lease together. Uh, so uh, look forward to that happening as well. Um, 
on December 17th this year. Um, did just ask, we did have a uh, runway overrun. Uh, that was a very long night for me. I uh, got the phone call uh, about two in the morning that we had an aircraft off the uh, end of the runway. Uh, it actually was not uh, scheduled to land at our airport. They went through a series of three other airports before somebody had the bright idea uh, to send them back to our place uh, in, in a downpour of rain. Uh, nevertheless, uh, it did get stuck in the mud. Uh, originally, they were straight off the end of the runway, about 50 feet straight off the end of the runway. Uh, at that point in time, the flight crew decided to add power to the aircraft and try to turn it around, and it got stuck in the mud. Uh, so, um, they just shut everything down. We shut the airport down until the morning we could get a good look uh, at what had happened. Uh, when it was clear the next morning that the uh, aircraft uh, actually was out of the uh, flight path of all other aircraft, we went ahead and reopened the airport. Um, the uh, company that owns the aircraft uh, sent their chief pilot, another flight crew, and three uh, mechanics down. Uh, and at 2 p.m. that afternoon, we proceeded uh, with a recovery operation. Uh, Iker Towing, set, a towing set, sent out a, a rather large tow vehicle. Uh, we elected to uh, go ahead and use the tow truck to try and pull the aircraft back up on uh, to the pavement rather than use a crane. If we had used a crane, we'd have had to shut the airport down uh, even longer. Uh, so uh, we encountered a little bit of difficulty uh, trying to pull it back up onto the asphalt, but at about 9 o'clock that evening, uh, we were able to get it back up onto the asphalt. Uh, we took it from there, towed it back up to our ramp, and three or four days later, uh, another crew came back out. They pressure washed the aircraft down, got all the mud out of the brakes and the wheel wells and everything, and flew it back to Pontiac, uh, Michigan. Uh, so the aircraft itself was not damaged during the event. Um, none, nobody was hurt. Um, the only damage that occurred to the aircraft was actually during the recovery operation. Uh, one of the tow straps uh, bent a main landing gear door, which in the grand scheme of things is not that big of a deal. Uh, they replaced it within probably a day after they got it back uh, to Michigan and put it back into service. Uh, back on October 11th, I just kind of wanted to include this. I was kind of proud to be able to do this. Um, uh, both myself and a couple of the other uh, employees at the airport, we, uh, we did participate in a uh, uh, supply relief flight uh, to South Carolina. Uh, we loaded up um, almost 400 pounds of food, uh, water, uh, diapers, baby food. Just uh, they, We had a long list of things uh, uh, that they were looking for. Uh, over in South Carolina. The uh, particular city that we flew the supplies to became inundated uh, with people that were fleeing the coast uh, after all the flooding uh, that they had in South Carolina, so their food bank quickly became depleted uh, there. Uh, they were also uh, kind of in a pickle. They were having a hard time getting trucks to this particular location to restock the supplies. Uh, so we loaded the uh, uh, food onto uh, my aircraft, uh, flew it to Manning, South Carolina, uh, when I got there, there were two or three other airplanes uh, on the ramp there, and they had been running uh, relief flights for that entire weekend, and I think the uh, uh, two days leading up to that as well. Uh, all in all, uh, over the course of that uh, three, four, five days, whatever it was, uh, they brought in over 6,000 pounds uh, of food and supplies uh, to the people there, and uh, I did, I think I included, uh, they uh, actually, I just did not expect to get that. They, uh, uh, sent a uh, thank you note uh, to say that uh, you know everything worked out for the best and they really appreciated uh, our help. So uh, I was just very proud to be able to uh, do that and wanted to share that uh, with everybody. As far as projects goes, um, we are wrapping up the vast majority of our projects. Our apron expansion project, lighting project, taxiway extension, uh, T-hanger construction project. All those projects are uh, in the midst of being closed out. Uh, we have also recently completed a uh, land purchase off the uh, south end of the airport property uh, across Cowan Highway. We bought uh, nine-tenths of an acre of land uh, out there. Uh, we don't intend to build anything on it. We just, um, it, it's encouraged by the FAA and TDOT for us to buy that type of land uh, when it exists uh, in the approaches to uh, our runways. So we were able to get a grant uh, to um, buy the land. It was a 95-5 uh, grant. Uh, so um, we had to put up 5%, which we uh, did out of our own account. Um, in the grand scheme of things, again, not that much money we were talking about. So we bought it, uh, and that will now allow us to keep that land undeveloped, hopefully keep better neighbors uh, in the future. Um, that way nobody will build anything on it. We won't have to uh, negotiate with them to try to tear it down or uh, to trim trees, whatever. Uh, that'll just be a vacant property uh, from now on. 
Um, we are reaching the end uh, of our um, storage hanger construction uh, out there, 80 by 80 hanger. Um, they started hanging the doors yesterday. Um, they had, uh, I want to say, about a third of the panels up at the end of the day today. Um, I expect within the next couple of days the doors will be up. They'll paint the red iron in the interior, uh, hook up the uh, electric, and we'll be ready to start uh, utilizing uh, that hanger for our transient traffic. Uh, the only other project that we have on the books right now uh, is in its beginning phases. Uh, we're looking to relocate our automated weather station uh, at the airport to a site that we've prepped south of our terminal and office building. Um, by doing this, this will open up the entire north end of the airport for development. Um, as I said, we do have a current hangar waiting list of over 30 aircraft. Um, if we so choose and can come up with the grant money to do it, we can go ahead and build another hangar out there, house at least another 10 aircraft uh, within that hangar. Um, <clears throat> but the first step to doing that will be uh, relocating this weather station. Uh, so we have taken uh, the baby steps to do that. We have submitted an application to the FAA to be able to do that. Ultimately, that will be the determining factor. Uh, we've received a preliminary waiver to go ahead and do it. Um, now we're just waiting for the official go ahead from them. Uh, at that point in time, uh, we've already worked it out with um, uh, TDOT Aeronautics. TDOT Aeronautics actually owns all of the automated weather stations at the airports in Tennessee. Uh, they are going through a project right now where they will fund the replacement of all of the equipment at every site they own within Tennessee. I've already talked to them about it. It makes no difference to them if they replace it in our old location or our new location. So they're on board with us moving it. Uh, at whatever point in time we have the site prep, they'll come in, install the new equipment, and remove all the old equipment, and we'll be off and running. So. Um, other than that, I think that's that's about all the uh, report I have for this quarter, unless anybody has any questions. I've got one question. <clears throat> uh, and it, it, two questions, actually, but you can answer them both at the same time. The airplane that ran off the yes. end of the runway, was that the first time that they had been to the airport? And then the other question is, was it due to the weather? Or rain is the reason it came. Uh, I'll answer the second question first. Yes, it was more than likely due to weather. Um, what had happened, and you can go to the uh, end of the runway and see exactly what happened. I, I don't know if you can see it now, I haven't looked in the last you know, several you know, weeks, but uh, the day that we were doing the recovery operation, we were able to walk out to the end of the runway, and you could see uh, where uh, the aircraft had started hydroplaning, just like a car, uh, when it's trying to uh, brake, uh, it can uh, hydroplane uh, given the right conditions, and it did. And, um, the flight crew actually did a very good job uh, of recovering the aircraft initially. Um, they had started to skid off to the right side of the runway. You could see the skid marks take it off to the side, and they recovered it at the last second. Brought it back into uh, the very center of the runway. It went dead center right off the end. Uh, didn't hit a light, didn't hit anything. Uh, so we were fortunate from that aspect. Um, I don't recall whether or not it had been this particular flight crew's uh, first time to the airport. Uh, the company that owns the aircraft, it's a cargo company out of Michigan, uh, they've delivered parts uh, for Nissan, for uh, some, or they've picked up parts, delivered parts for uh, various manufacturers here uh, many times uh, before. <coughs> I'd even talked to, to the chief pilot when he came down, and he recalled himself uh, being here several times, even in inclement weather. Uh, so, um, yes, uh, I, I would definitely attribute the weather um, to being the biggest factor uh, in, in the whole ordeal. Um, does it mean we need more runway, a wider runway? Not necessarily. Yeah. Um, it, it, that kind of thing will be taken into account down the, future, or down the road. Um, we have kicked the idea around. It's just not really high on our priority list right now. We've got a lot of other things we'd uh, rather do uh, that make more sense. Okay. Any any other questions, <coughs> comments from anyone? Okay. I apologize for the smell. I didn't realize it was that bad. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> Thank you, man. Roger. Good evening, Council. Mayor, Ms. Bass, Ms. Chief. Third quarter of our. I was getting confused with the third quarter of the calendar year or second quarter of the fiscal year. Mm -hmm. the second quarter of the fiscal year, we concluded in December, October to December. Uh, lots of projects going on. Uh, we did uh, complete several and we did start several. Uh, obviously, a lot, most of the money we're spending is on the, uh, on the uh, wastewater side of the business. 
Uh, you can see down through there the project that are going to Sharp Springs uh, upgrade on wastewater is just about to get started. Uh, the other uh, projects that are listed there are pretty much either in process or, or nearing completion. Uh, but uh, all in all, we've had projects going on across all, all three systems. Uh, financial wise for the 2016 fiscal year, uh, we're in uh, good shape, favorable to plan, about $57,000. Uh, revenues are down 138000 which uh, is the utility business, is, as you know, is driven by weather more than anything, um, in both water and, and uh, power. Uh, being a mild December, uh, it really uh, kept revenues down to us, and it was good news to the customers that bills wasn't as high. So, uh, all in all, though, we, were, we are still favorable to plan by $57,000. We did conclude all of our audits in fourth quarter. Uh, we had an outstanding audit, so we had no audit points on any from any of the outside auditors or TPA. Uh, so, we were, we were very proud of that. And as far as, uh, as you know, we operate uh, three systems. We want to operate power, water, and wastewater. It's actually three different, totally, totally different systems. We cannot intermingle funds. Uh, they're all got their own bank accounts, their own profit and loss, their own balance sheets, and all three of those systems right now are, are financially sound. Uh, productivity projects. Uh, we did have three major water leaks uh, in December. Uh, that did drive our water loss year to date up to 25% which is still better than about 75% of the other utilities across Tennessee. So <coughs> we will get that back down, hopefully, with us. we can uh, minimize the leaks that, that we are having. Uh, a lot of emphasis has gone into safety. Uh, we have a lot of opportunity for employees to get uh, hurt, so we, we do spend some money there and a lot of training. But uh, we have gone over a year and a half now with any lost time accidents. You can see down through some of the other productivity projects there, I'm not going to cover all of these, but one of them that is working really well for us is all of our dispatching and everything is completely electronic now. Uh, all the servicemen have tablets in their truck. They're dispatched from customer service uh, in, the, in the office. So that has been quite a savings of productivity. Uh, Six Sigma is continuing. We're getting ready to do some major events there. And that's in preparation for switching over later this year to a controlled inventory crib. All three uh, systems will have their inventories in one location. We'll have crib attendants and they will be treated as work orders every job will where you will pull out or you will mortgage out the necessary parts. Uh, uh, they'll be on a combine system as far as replacement. So um, four year in, that should be fully functional. We are upgrading the cashier system and we're just starting to do some uh, engineering work on the upgrading of the third of our fourth substation. Uh, of course, a lot of our emphasis is on wastewater. We have uh, <clears throat> still got about $7.3 million that we need to spend over the next five years. We should be able to fund that out of the uh, operating funds. We continue to pay down our debt. We have paid that down about $3 million in the last four years. So that is very good. Uh, December was, was a challenge somewhat. Uh, we are required by the state to record rainfall at the uh, wastewater plant. And last year was an all-time record. We recorded 92 inches of rain at the wastewater plant. That is a, a, almost 30% higher than any other year. And what that does is you have a lot more water to treat that's coming in. And um, it, was a, it was a challenge for all of those heavy rainfall events. What's going on? Uh, we're still doing lots of engineering in Sharp Springs, Bel Air areas. 
Uh, we talked about the inventory cribs, and right now we're also doing some Williams Cove and Mason Everett upgrades out in the county. So, uh, all in all, it was a good quarter, and things are progressing. Any questions? Mm -hmm. I was going to ask you if you happen to know how much rainfall we had last year. So. 92 inches. Thank you for <laughs> bringing that to everyone's attention. I don't think anybody really thinks about that much. <clears throat> think about putting that into feet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> feet, <and> feet. <laughs> yeah. All right. Next on the agenda, soccer complex and, and invoice. Are you doing that? Mark Carroll. Mark Carroll. Okay. Uh, the soccer complex, um, the well, the soccer association has come back to the city and the soccer complex and facilities have been completed at this time and they said they were satisfactory with it and so I just need permission at this time to go ahead and pay that final invoice to Mons Unlimited and it's four thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars. I just ask permission to do that. Okay, Council, you've heard the request. What would be the will of the Council? I move to pay for the final bill. Okay, motion to approve by Councilman Wama. Second. Second by Councilman <coughs> Spencer. Discussion? All those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion carried. Thank you, Mark. Under new business, uh, bids on concession stands for the Recreation Department. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Minutes. Okay. Uh, we'll go back to our uh, item A and unfinished uh, approval of the minutes. Uh, what will be the will of the council on the minutes? Motion to approve. Okay. Motion Second. to approve by Councilwoman Bates. Second by Councilwoman Alexander. Discussion? All those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion carried. Thank you. Okay. Go into new business. Bids for concession stands for the recreation department. Mark Carey. Um, as you all received in your packets, the concession stand, <laughs> um, the concession stand bids. There was only one bid received, so we just need permission to go ahead and accept that bid. Okay, Council, you've heard the request. Uh, in regard to the concession stand bid, what's will of the council? Motion to accept. Motion to approve by Councilwoman Alexander. Second. Second by Councilman Spencer. Any discussion? All those in favor, aye. Aye. Those no. I'm really just having a test to see if the council's paying attention <laughs> to completing these, not following the, the agenda, and they are. Uh, we'll go back to unfinished business. This will complete it. Bids on Laurel Avenue, Laura Avenue property, Ms. Rowe. Completed in your packet, we did rebid the property <clears throat> to the city of Winchester on Laura Avenue. Um, we also, uh, at Councilman Spencer's request, contacted each adjoining property owner and notified them to let them know that the auction was going on, as well as re-advertised in the paper. The bid came from one of the adjoining property owners, Betty Jo Drummond, for $525. And I would like to recommend that we take that, accept that. Okay. Council, you heard the request from Ms. Rowland in regards to the Laura Avenue property. Be the will of the council. Move to approve. Mm -hmm. Motion to approve by Councilman Spencer. Second. Second by Councilman Wama. Any discussion? You know, I guess I'd kind of like to say, point out that you know, it, it, on the surface of this, you might might think that that's not very much to pay for a, for a piece of property, but uh, the value of that property was um, basically landlocked by the neighbors, and uh, the value of the property really was to the neighbors that surrounded that property. We had it on our agenda last month and had a bid for less than what we rebid it. So we have, I feel like, done our due diligence to, to try to get the, the fair and best price for that. So, uh, any other comments, questions? 
would be the will of the council. Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Councilwoman Bates. Second. Second by Councilwoman Alexander. Um, no other discussion. All those in favor, aye. Aye. Those no. Motion carries. New business approval to sur surplus items for building, village department, and sell on the gov. Included in your packet are the items um, that Mr. Sanders has requested that they be um, surplused. It's a HB design jet 1050C plus printer, <coughs> 10 ink cartridges, and one row of 42 inch photo paper. Um, and actually, the design jet plus printer is the large printer that's located as you walk in the annex. Um, we do have another one that we've been using. Um, but we would like to surplus this one and we would like to do it on gov deals. Okay, Council, you've heard the request in regard to the surplus item uh, that the Coast Department has would be the will of the Council. Move to approve. Motion to approve by Councilman Spencer. Second. Second by <coughs> Sneed. Discussion? All those in favor, aye. Aye. Those no. Motion carries. Item C is changing changes to the personnel policy. Yes, included in your packet, and we did discuss this um, at length at our work session, uh, are a few uh, minor changes to our personnel policy, most which are just housekeeping items, um, practices that the city already does, but we didn't have in writing. But the one most notable change is the um, reduction mm -hmm. of doing away with comp time. that um, I can read it if you like. Everybody's had an opportunity to review it. We discussed it in our work session. Um, what would be the will of the council on the changes to the personnel policy? Move to approve. Motion to approve by Councilman Spencer. Second. Second by Councilwoman Alexander. Discussion? Mayor, I would like to also ask that this <clears throat> not be affected till February 1st that it gives time to let the employees that do have some of this accumulated time to take it off. Okay. Can you amend that to be effective February 1st? I'd be able to. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We've got that amended. Okay. Good. Thank you. All right. Any other discussion? All those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, no. <coughs> Motion carries. We'll move into our uh, communications. Um, City Administrator, Ms. Robin. Um, I would just like to mention, I don't think this will go out um, publicly, or maybe it will. Uh, tomorrow evening, um, starting in the afternoon for 24 hours, the City of Winchester, our local government programs will be down, which is where we receive our taxes. Uh, we're going to be changing software. Uh, we can still accept the, the money and the tax. We will just be giving paper receipts. And we should be up and running again. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Um, mentioned that we are starting on the construction project downtown. Um, it's due. Um, it's a 150-day project. But hopefully, they'll be able to finish that in a shorter amount of time. Okay. Uh, council communications. Council state. I don't have anything to report. Just New Year. Happy New Year, everybody. And <laughs> Councilwoman Alexander. I just want to commend the police department and the fire department. I was overwhelmed reading all the calls that y'all, each of your departments had. And Chief Young, especially what you said in your letter about that horrific accident on the 31st, I think all of us are very compassionate when it comes to dealing with uh, things like that. And I cannot fathom what your men have seen. But I appreciate your words. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? No. Councilwoman Bates? Uh, we have a beer board meeting tomorrow at 6 p.m. in the Annex, which is Wednesday 13th. So if anybody's interested in coming to a beer board meeting, <coughs> it will be then. And we have a new business that opened today. So you need to go check it out, the liquidation over where food line was. Okay. Yep. Councilman Spencer. Uh, no report, Mayor. 
Come to the woman. I don't have any report. I did visit our new business open this morning out on the food line. Liquidators, and there's a lot of business going on. I asked everybody to go out and check it out. You can probably buy something. Trade it home. Okay. Uh, I, I guess uh, Councilwoman Alexander made a, a real good point as far as uh, especially police department, fire department, and the work that they do that it's um, we don't really realize what goes on until it's brought to our attention and kind of smacks us in our face. But uh, thank you for what, uh, what y'all do. And also, uh, the other departments as well, uh, you know, with uh, all of the, uh, the rain, uh, <coughs> the public works has had to work uh, on uh, drainage and, and get drains cleaned out and out in the weather and uh, just all the departments, recreate, yeah, all of them, everybody. Uh, you know, we just don't, you know, we take it for granted and we shouldn't and we appreciate uh, what all of you do. Uh, even the finance department and keeping us uh, financially on track, Martha Carroll, thank you. Uh, and, and the good leadership that we've had throughout the years with Ms. Roden, so thank you all. And, and the leadership that we've had with the council and I look forward to working with all of you this next year and uh, it'll be a good year, so thank you. Uh, any other comments? Chief, I will ask you a question if you'll promise to just just answer me. And, you know, uh, <laughs> it's at least five minutes. <laughs> the uh, synthetic drug problem that we're seeing around, the, the, we, we passed an ordinance, what, a year ago, two years ago, in regard to synthetic drugs, you, you come up here, in regard to synthetic drugs, uh, is it making a difference? I, I, I mean, I, I, I want to think that it, that it is, and uh, uh, but we're beginning to kind of see a, a hiccup now, it seems like. We're seeing, we are seeing a hiccup, and uh, a lot of the problems that we're dealing with is black market type things, under the counter, things that we're working on, trying to find a source of it. Uh, I've done a thing with Dick today about it, uh, Mr. Wolf, and, uh, and I'll, we'll be doing a press conference, state press conference Friday at TBI headquarters. Uh, we'd ask to come up and join them on that issue. Uh, the, uh, it is a serious problem. Things that keep changing things on us, sticking things in the back door on us. Uh, I think our biggest problem in our community is drug addiction. And uh, I think the message that we need to get out is prevention and education and try to change the demand side of that through treatment and, and uh, education. Uh, I think that's the biggest issue that we have facing our community. Uh, Dick had a call this afternoon. Last year we had 186 overdoses in Franklin County. That's one every other day, every two days here in Franklin County. That is entirely too much. Uh, most, majority of us prescription medication which is our number one drug that we're dealing with right now. But we are working diligently on it, Mayor, and uh, the, uh, the ordinance that we need to, I think we might need to uh, try to enforce that a little bit better and get a more, maybe a little better language in it will allow us to do some things. I'm glad you brought that more, more teeth into it. A little more teeth into it, yes sir. All right, well, we'll look forward to your recommendation, so. Yes sir. Uh, Thank you. I get my nine back, so I'll okay. five minutes. I don't know what that down before, but uh, <coughs> anyway. Any other comments from uh, anyone in the audience? <coughs> Chattanooga Times did a good story on Chief Young and his drugs. A couple of weeks ago, I gave a copy to him. I built a fire with it. <laughs> <laughs> you just can't es escape your reputation, Candace. That's right. There you go. Okay, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion. Motion to adjourn by Councilwoman Alexander. Second. Second by Councilwoman Bates. All those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, no. And adjourn. Thank y'all.